Once again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us in our worship service here at the Covenant Fellowship of Boston, particularly those who are uh, visiting us and those who are uh, visiting us after uh, some time uh, before your last visit. Uh, thank you all uh, for uh, coming for this 13th Sunday after uh, Pentecost. And we have an interesting reflection uh, with a question. A cross, anyone? And, well, we're not uh, all familiar uh, with crosses. We have plenty to choose from uh, in our wall, and a couple of here, and uh, three in the front, so and some over there, too. So we have plenty of crosses there in the back by uh, Monsieur Robert, back uh, there. So we have plenty of, of crosses uh, to uh, choose from, probably one for each one if we were able to, uh, to pick one. But uh, before the sermon, let me make uh, an interesting pitch because I, as I said uh, during the call to worship, besides the season of peace begins in our denomination uh, this Sunday, we also are observing Presbyterian higher education. And, and by the way, the 2017-2018 Presbyterian calendar is dedicated to Presbyterian higher Education. So uh, here we have uh, picks from uh, schools like colleges, uh, universities that are uh, related to our denomination, the PCUSA, as well as uh, seminaries. And needless to say, you know uh, how happy and proud I am that uh, my son Obed was included for the month of August. So I will ask you to pray for uh, Presbyterian higher education. And those of you that uh, in due time uh, will have uh, children uh, bounding for college, please consider the uh, PCUSA related colleges and universities. I have a, a wonderful experience that my uh, oldest son, uh, Jesse, graduated from St. Andrews uh, Presbyterian University in Lauringborn, North Carolina in 2005. And Obed, uh, my youngest, who uh, turned 22nd this uh, September 1st, uh, is going to graduate from uh, the University of the Ozarks uh, in Glasgow, Arkansas. And just here in Texas, we have uh, three PCUSA related colleges and universities, Trinity in San Antonio, uh, Shriner uh, in Kerrville, and uh, Austin College in Sherman. So please pray for all these institutions uh, those three here in Texas, and uh, just remember, do you have a choice in higher education uh, for your children in PCUSA related colleges and universities? In the verse 24 of Matthew 16, Jesus says, If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget himself, carry his own cross, and follow him. At, time, at times, the given was only one vertical stake, calling in Latin crux simplex, or the sim simple cross. This was the simplest available construction for torturing or torturing and killing the condemned. Frequently, however, there was a cross piece attached either at the top to give the shape of a T, that the cross comista in Latin, or just below the top as in the form most familiar in Christian symbolism that in Latin was called crux in misa. The New Testament writings about the crucifixion of Jesus do not speak specifically about the shape of that cross. But the early writings that do speak of its shape from about the year 100 in the Common Era and on describe it as a shape like the letter T, the Greek letter Tau, or as composed of an upright and a transverse beam sometimes with a small projection in the upright. 
the Greek and Latin words corresponding to crucifixion apply to many different forms of painful execution from impaling on a stake to affixing to a tree to an upright pole or to a combination of an upright and a cross beam that in Latin was called patibulum. In some cases, the condemned was forced to carry the cross uh, beam to the place of the execution. A whole cross will weigh well over 300 pounds, but the cross beam would not be as quite as burdensome, weighing around 100 pounds. So, in most cases, According to historians, this was the case, the cross beam. The, the condemned was just carrying the cross beam like this, holding in upon his back. Uh, of course, we are uh, familiar with movies and pictures that Jesus was uh, waging a, a full cross. The person executed may have been attached to the cross by rope, though nails and other sharp materials were used. Nails were sought as amulets with perceived medical, uh, medicinal, excuse me, medicinal qualities. You might remember a passage uh, in, in the crucifixion uh, when, when, the, when the soldiers just rolled the dice, who might get uh, some of uh, Jesus' clothing. While a crucifixion was an execution, it was also a humiliation. By making the condemned as vulnerable as possible, despite its frequent use by the Romans, the horrors of crucifixion did not escape mention, but some in their eminent orators. Cicero, for example, described crucifixion as a most cruel and disgusting punishment and suggested that the very mention of the cross should be far removed not only from a Roman citizen's body, but from his mind, from his eyes, and from his ears. I grew up in Mexico with the notion that every person's own cross to bear is something like a heavy, a physical defect or a chronic disease, having a sick or handicapped child, living with a bad spouse, dealing with a rebellious children, or overcome by a bad habit or an addiction. So, I heard many persons saying, well, that's my cross. Seeing crosses along roads or highways were common for me until I asked if people were buried there. And the person's the person response that was that it only marked the site where a person left his or her cross before dying. They're not buried there. It's just marked the place that symbolically in the understanding of Latin American Christianity a person had left his her cross. My hometown city council does not permit to installing crosses within city limits. So when a friend of mine was shot to death on a street corner, his parents drew one where he fell dead with white chalk. And then uh, some candles there just to mark the spot where he fell dead. St. Peter, according to tradition, was crucified upside down at his own request. And that's why we have Saint, the cross of St. Peter, because he did not feel worthy enough to die the same way as Jesus. St. Andrew, apostle and St. Peter's brother, is traditionally said to have been crucified in an X-shaped cross. And hence, we have the St. Andrew's cross. But what does it mean to carry our own cross? 
What does it mean for you and for me to carry your own cross and my own cross? It means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. This is called dying to self. It is a call to absolute surrender. After each time Jesus commanded cross-bearing, he said, For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Will a person gain anything if he wins the whole world but loses his life? Although the call is tough, the reward is matchless. Wherever Jesus went, he drew crowds. Although these multitudes often follow him as a Messiah, their view of who the Messiah really was and what he would do was distorted. They thought that Christ would usher in the restored kingdom. They believed he would free them from the oppressive rule of the Roman occupiers. <clears throat> Even Christ's own, own inner circle of disciples thought the kingdom was coming soon. When Jesus began teaching that he was going to die at the hands of the Jewish leaders and their Gentiles overlords, his popularity sank. Many of the shocked followers rejected him. Truly, they were not able to put to death their own ideas, plans, and desires and exchange them for his. Following Jesus is easy when life runs smoothly. Our true commitment to Him is revealed during trials. Jesus assures us that trials will come to His followers. Discipleship demands sacrifice. And Jesus never hit that cost. There's always a cost, a price to pay for discipleship. Therefore, Jesus appeared to dissuade, dissuade them. How different from the typical gospel presentation? How many people would respond to an altar call that went, Come follow Jesus, and you may face the loss of friends, family, reputation, career, and possibly even your life. The number of false converts would likely decrease. Such a call in what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow. Commitment to Christ means taking up your cross daily, giving up your hopes, your dreams, your possessions, even your very life in need for the cause of Christ. Only if you are willing to take up your cross. May you be called his disciple. The reward is worth the price. Jesus followed his call of death to self. Take up your cross and follow me with the gift of life in Christ. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me, I'll find it. I like those crosses. <laughs> they're beautiful, they're small, almost no weight, with uh, diamonds, and small. I, I like the cross. And that's one of the questions. Need the cross be beautiful? Need the cross be attractive? It will be worth for us if Whatever material is it made of or from? My first years, I was a Roman Catholic, and I grew up in a Roman Catholic country where Protestants were not supposed to wear anything. So I grew up with the notion that it was not, not necessary uh, for me to uh, wear a cross or a medallion, or a specific saint, or, or virgin. That was not necessary. Let me tell you something. 
when I was part of a Bible study uh, for uh, Lent in 2015 at the Church of McAllen, at the end of uh, the study that took about two months, everyone received a cross like this. And from then on, I understood there's nothing wrong with bearing a cross. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is if we are giving a real meaning of bearing that cross. Not because it's a beautiful one, but it's because it's a reminder of what it means. We do not worship crosses. There's no power in it. The power is in what it represents. Our call to discipleship. And from then on, I'm being putting in, in my vehicle, which is typically in vehicles that there are crosses or rosaries or other symbols of Christianity or religion uh, in, in our vehicles. And this morning I brought it from, from my van just to share this with you. Of course, I like to have any of these crosses. I will wish to have enough money to present those as a gift. They're all beautiful and highly valuable. But does it really convey the full meaning of the cross? Yes and no. Yes, because the cross has come to represent a symbol of God's redemptive love through Jesus Christ. And no, because the cross is a reminder of the unspeakable pain, the humiliation, and the suffering of Jesus Christ. A cross in any shape, from any material, of any value, is not an amulet providing a supernatural protection. Though wearing it or displaying it is a testimony of our faith. And some of you that, like me, that probably you like horror movies, in particular those for vampires, that they are afraid it's a matter just to make this symbol and the vampire the trials. No, no. But whatever things, you know, a couple of pencil things that we make the symbol of the cross. You know, and, and, and the vampire the trials. Again, the cross is not a matter of beauty. The cross is a matter of perseverance. And as I started the sermon, I finished it with the same question. A cross, anyone? Amen.